So today we are going to evaluate with ultrasound examination the back of the horse. I take opportunity with this uh, video to acknowledge my uh, mentor and professor Jean-Marie Denois who taught me all these techniques. Um, as far as this horse, today we'll try to see most of the important reference images you need to be aware of as you go over the back. We do start with a liner probe with the standoff pad in order to evaluate the skin, the fascia and the spinous processes and in between the supraspinous ligament. So we start from the cranial aspect of the back of the horse. You want to make sure that your probe is always directed with the cranial aspect to the left of the screen, the caudal aspect of the probe showing the right side of the screen as a convention. So if you squeeze your probe gently, don't hesitate to increase the gain to have a nice deep purview of the ligament. The ligament will be just below the thoracolumbar fascia. So each fiber of the supraspinous ligament will eventually orientate a bit more ventral to insert of the next spinous process. So you want to have this view and get to see a nice shape of the top of the spinous process, see the fibers in between, see if these fibers are well aligned and have a good ecogenicity and in between each of these spinous processes, you can see the ventral fibers orientating more ventrally to insert on that spinous process. So you can go along the back, all the way down, make sure that the distance between the skin and the spinous process are respected. Some spinous process like this one might be irregular, either because you have some antisopathy, like we see here on this horse, a small irregularity of the bone surface and some echogenic finding within the ligament. And as you go down, you can evaluate again each top line of the spinous process. Look at the surface of the bone and look at the same time at the edge of the supraspinous ligament, which should be a little bit concave in between two spinous processes like you can see here. Even though some spinous process can be irregular to a certain extent, this is almost normal unless you see some hypoechogenic finding and irregularity of the bone here, which is a bit more dramatic and could show some antisophytosis of the supraspinous ligament. So this horse is interesting because we had some reference images. At the same time, we have some minor findings on the superficial aspect. When you come to a transverse view, you're going to orientate your probe exactly transversely to the main axis and you can see the skin, the thoracolumbar fascia and you can see the spinous process edges so just the tip in between two transverse processes you're going to see again the ligament getting a bit wider because it inserts more deep on the spinous process and then you get to another tip of the spinous process and you see the thoracolumbar fascia you can fade sideways to see if there's any abnormal finding and same at the level of the spinous process of the vertebrae you are scanning. And uh, I am finding here just the small edge of where we had a small irregularity. So you see that the bone is not exactly perfectly smooth because we do have a minor change within the ligament and the spinous process insertion. So this two to five megahertz probe is going to allow us to look at more deep structures of the back. We are looking at the longissimus muscle on each side. We get to see the gluteus muscle starting at the level of the lumbar spine and going down on the croup, as you know. But the other structure that we really like to have a good interest in is to evaluate the facet of each articular processes that we also call AP axial articular processes of each vertebrae. So we do have per vertebrae one cranial facet and one caudal facet or epiaxial joint. So you can start on a thoracic area where you can see left or right. You have to decide first which structure you look at. I want to start to the right. I'm going to see on the screen three structures. I'm going to see the longissimus muscle. I'm going to see here just at the edge of the spinous process the multifidus muscle and lower you're going to get the facet of the epiaxial joint 
And if I am in the axis of the rib, I'm going to see the rib with the costovertebral joint. So basically, the junction between the rib and the vertebrae. As you go more caudally, you can do actually an image that builds the two together. So if I want to have two images on my screen, I can move on to get a dual screen. And this will be the left side. So let's go like this to see the right side of the screen. And we update to see the left side. And we can stick them together to see the level of one full vertebrae. This vertebrae again, the two longissimus muscle, left and right. You're going to see the multifidus muscle here. You have a darker line in between, which is the fascia, the deeper fascia, and the articular processes on both edges here, left and right. We're going to see a nicer image of the articular processes because we're going to move a bit more caudally or cranially to get the reference image. The reference image is made of a small plateau shape like a nicer, crisper line. And this crisper line is giving you, just at the edge here, a small idea of the joint space, very tiny, tiny joint space there. And we can update to see the same image on the right side, here. Sometimes you will see a shape which is a bit more distinguished with a more concavity and remodeling. This is actually quite normal. This is called the mammillary process, and this is completely at the edge of the uh, plateau made by the vertebrae body. If we go more caudally, at the stage where you are here at 18L1 or L1, L2, you're going to start to see a more square shape of the vertebrae. We can update to see the left side as well. And you can go one by one for each vertebrae here to see each articular processes, left and right, and the transverse process, which show this line very deep from your screen. As you know, at this level, on the lumbar part, under the transverse processes will be the psoas muscle. So we are going a bit more caudally again to evaluate here maybe the level of L2, L3. I update on the screen to see the right side. And this is the right side of the screen with uh, the nice picture over there of the junction between L2, L3. This is the left, this is the right. This is again the multifidus muscle. This is the spinous process axis. The longissimus muscle on the left side, more superficial, the fascia. As you go more caudally, you're going to evaluate every spine one by one. So every vertebral body with the cranial and caudal aspect of this facet. This epiaxial joint on the left and on the right side should be smooth. You can see sometimes a gap, which is a joint. You may have some remodeling coming with some bone structure and more hyperechoic hyper -echoic structures, which are similar to potential bone uh, formation around the epiaxial joint. Again, you want to see the longissimus muscle compare the left and the right. The multifidus muscle shape compare the left and the right. This multifidus, as you know, is a core muscle, which means that you can evaluate the size and the shape of this core muscle to see how the horse condition can be in regard to its fitness or in potential rehabilitation issues. And underneath, you have the transverse processes, which are the deeper structure of uh, the vertebrae that you can see with your probe. Under the, the transverse processes, as you know, we do have the psoas muscle. So this is what you can see with these transverse views all the way, starting from the thoracic area, including the costovertebral uh, joints, to the thoracolumbar and lumbar area, where you can see with more ease the articular processes and the muscle structures. Thank you for watching. For more information and videos, please visit sonosite.com backslash vidhead.